Good morning, everybody. I'm Joel Wallace, and welcome to my YouTube channel about guitars, playing music, everything guitars. Um, before we get started, if you like what you've been getting from these YouTube videos I've been putting out, hit that subscribe button down there below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit a notification if you want to know when I'll get putting out new videos, you'll get that notification on it. It'll be greatly appreciated. Today, I want to talk about um, some tips for rehearsals. Um, most rehearsals last for a couple hours. Some some bands I played in, we'd go two, three hours, sometimes three hours. It's just depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And that's the thing. What are you trying to accomplish when you have rehearsal? Now, let me explain something that I, I, um, I have a difference between band practicing and band rehearsals for practicing to me is, is um, where you're all getting together to learn a song for the first time. Rehearsals is where you learnt your parts and you come in and you uh, uh, put it together and start building the song and learning the song together based upon what you've already learned from home. And these, and these days with uh, YouTube and, and, you know, digital music, you can, you can learn your part very easily at home and then bring it to rehearsals and put it together. It's just easy to do. It's easier that way. Uh, used to, we used to have to listen to it on an eight track and then try to play it, listen to it on eight track, try to play it at the band rooms. But, um, I've got them listed. There's probably 10 or 13 tips here. Uh, and I'll try to go through them very, very briefly because I think most musicians know about this, a lot of this stuff already. But one is, um, what are you trying to uh, achieve when you have a band practice? <coughs> Excuse me. What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to learn a song? Are you trying to um, write a song? Are you trying to get the intros right, the endings right? Are you do? You, are you trying to work on solos or dual solos? You know, have that in mind when you come in each time you rehearse. What are you trying to achieve that day? Now, I'll start off with this, and I'll mention this several times through this video. And I've been in these type of bands, and I've done it myself. I'm not not picking on any band when I do this, but they come in, they play the music, and they go home. There's no working on nothing. If there is, it's very little, very little. So, you know, one of the things you can do when you have your rehearsals is break it into time slots. Uh, you can spend, say, a two-hour rehearsal. You can do two hour, one hour working on vocals and the last hour working with the band. That way, everybody gets to work on something besides just coming in and playing the music and going home. Don't, you know, you're not working on mistakes, you're not working on endings, you're not working on beginnings, you're not working on dynamics or nothing. Just come in, plug in and go. Don't do that. Start working on your songs. <clears throat> you know, and plan your rehearsal too. Make sure you plan everything. Cause, I mean, you know, don't go in there blind saying, well, what are we going to work on today? You know, which song, you need to know what songs you're going to be working on and how and, and, uh, what are you going to rehearse? What parts of those songs are you going to rehearse? So be aware of that when you plan your rehearsals and whenever you try to achieve what you're trying to do in a rehearsal. Uh, this next tip is something that's a pet peeve of mine, playing in bands, and it's be on time. A lot of times you only got a couple hours to rehearse. Don't be the person that comes in and at rehearsal, say rehearsals from three to five on Saturday, which is a normal slot for a lot of bands to rehearse, you know, if they're not playing that weekend. But anyway, don't come in at three o'clock and start setting your equipment up. Don't come in at three o'clock, start talking about what's happening to you that week. Don't come in at three o'clock saying, well, wait a minute, I got to finish my McDonald's hamburger. While y'all set up, I'll finish eating. And then when they're, you know, then what happens when they're finished setting up and you're eating, they're waiting on you to set up after you finish eating. Don't be that person. Be on time. You know, if you need to be there to set up equipment and it takes you 10, 15 minutes, get there 10 to 15 minutes before practice time. And make it a habit. 
be on time. Another one is, like I said, I'll bring this up several times, is that a lot of times bands will come in and they'll just play the songs and go. And I've wrote a few things down, so when I look down and look at this, it's just to remind me. But uh, one, when you do that, you're just practicing your mistakes. Let that sink in. You're practicing your mistakes. You got to be able to work on the song. There's nothing wrong with stopping it when you hit a mistake. Stop it. Play that part over and over and over until everybody gets it. They've learned it. And that's what I call looping. It's another term, it's a record tune, but it's also called looping, where you play those bars over and over and over until everybody gets the changes. They get the feel, you know, and it takes more than one practice to do that, too. Uh, let me strongly go there. One practice before you play is not going to get it because someone's not going to do it right. They'll forget it within a day or two of, of playing. So rehearse it over and over again, sometimes of weeks. Because you got, here's the thing, it's all about perfecting the art that God gave you, talent that God gave you. You should, be, you should be playing to the best of your ability. When you go before people, you should be playing to the best of your ability, not just fumbling through. Don't go through the motions. Don't go through the motions of it. Just pick up play, and whatever it's going to be is what it's going to be. Fix it before you play it. Now, here's one that you know people are going to argue with me about, most likely. Use a click track. And people say, well, that ruins it all. You know, we can't have the feel. You're not going to get the feel and the flow. Well, the feel and flow can come when you finally play. But rehearsals, everybody needs to be on the same time. I don't mind a click track. It's not my favorite either. But if I got a good drummer that knows how to keep a time, and it's the same time every time we play it, I'm okay with that. That's my click track. But if not, use a click track until you've learned a song, until the drummer's learned a song, he's learned the feel, he's learned everything about it, and then you can eliminate the click track. Just a thought. Another one is have a leader in the band. Now, that don't mean like the leader of the band, like the person that started the band, but someone's got to take control and authority and say, stop, we need to work on this, or keep going, we're doing fine, or you know, whoa, let's stop for a minute. Let's sing these parts without the instruments for a minute. I want to hear how the harmonies are going. I got to hear it. Uh, stop. Those guitars are too loud for this position. Stop. You didn't put a, uh, uh, you didn't, the drummer didn't lead into the next verse. He just carried the same beat right on through without, like, there's a change coming up. You know, things like that. There's got to be a leader, and they need to be able to control, and I'm not, I hate to use that word, but they, they need to control the band because bands can get out of out of hand really quick. Um, another tip, and, you know, keep your levels low. I don't mean so low that you can't hear. Now, I've played in bands where it's so low, it, it there's no dynamic, there's no force, there's no power in the music. The, vol the volumes are so low. So, you know, but for rehearsals, that's fine. You don't need to crank up the 10 on, on guitars and bass and keyboards and the vocals don't need to be blaring with reverbs and delays and all that stuff on them. You know, practice your vocals, practice your guitars and stuff at a low volume while you're at rehearsals. And there'll be a time, and then when you get before the people, then you can bring the power up. I like to call it idling. When you're rehearsing, just put it on idle. Idle that bad boy. And then when it's time to, to really show them what you can do, then the, the sound guy can come out of idle and, and just bust you guys up, man, and give you the power EQ'd and all that. So keep the, the levels low while right? rehearsing. Here's one a lot of bands don't do, but the, I, most of the professional bands that I have played in, people that are really serious about their music, and the ones that do a lot of recording, a lot of touring that I've done with, they record their rehearsals. And we go back and we listen to them and we can hear where we're, we're going off. We can hear where we need to work on. If you don't record, 
you'll never know what you sound like. Record your rehearsals. It'll be one of the best things you've ever done for your career as a musician. It will make you better. And as far as rehearsals, as far as recording, you know, take notes. I keep notes most of the time whenever I'm working with a, a serious band on what I need to do when I don't need to play, when I when I should be playing, when it, what type of feel do they want with the song, what type of uh, uh, settings do I need to use on my guitar for that song. Take notes. And also, for some of you guys that are in professional bands, you need to rehearse like you're gigging. I don't mean volume-wise, but... If you're one of the type of guys, hey, what's going on, everybody? Let's get up and rock and roll, you know, or get up, let's praise the Lord, or whatever, whatever type of band you're in, you know, practice that, rehearse that. The more you get used to doing it, the easier it'll become in front of people. So rehearse those things. Now, here's a few more. This video is getting a little bit long. I, I may edit this one. I'm not sure, but here's a here's a couple of extra little. I got three tips here, I believe, that might help you out. Uh, one, if you're in rehearsal and you've got something to say, talk into a microphone. Because when you walk away from that mic and everybody's, you know, they, they don't hear what you're saying. Because the drums are coming through the monitor, the guitars are coming through the monitor, you got something to say, speak into a microphone. It gets you used to hearing your voice. It gets you used to talking through a microphone. It will help you 100% if you talk through a microphone every time you got something to say at rehearsals. Another one is sound checks. Now, you know, most people get sound checks. It's like, are we on? Oh, good. Let's start playing. Well, it's, that don't work. You should have a sound check for your band first. Those drums and that bass guitar better be in that system. They better be coming through because that's your rhythm. That's the ones that's going to keep the beat and the timing that make people move. Get them up to a volume that it needs to be so it sounds good. Then everything else is icing on the cake. Get your vocals in mix real good. Make sure everybody in the band is happy. If one person is not happy and they're not getting what they need, then if that whole rehearsal ends up being getting the system straight, do it. Because it, it just doesn't work when, every, when half the band's happy and the other half of the band is not happy with the system. Take the time. Take the time to get your sound right. And then you'll know what you'll sound like when you play. And another thing is, like we, we went over before, is you know, what are you trying to achieve? Is be prepared. Send out emails with all your, uh, with all the uh, songs you're gonna sing, what you're trying to achieve, and all that. Now look, band rehearsals is one of the hardest things you can probably do as a musician. You're dealing with people, and the more people you have in that band, the harder it's gonna be, because everybody has ideas on what a band should be. I know I do. And, and I, I say that from experience, but it can come over hard sometimes, you know. Um, just remember you're dealing with people. Be patient. If you're the leader, be patient. Work with them. Make sure everybody's getting what they need to make this band happen. Make sure they've got all the emails, all the music, and the recordings of the song. You've got to have all that. So look, I hope these um, these tips help you out in your next rehearsal. And look, I love you guys. And once again, hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the like button, thumbs up for me. Uh, it helps me out a whole bunch. I love you guys, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.